Hi everybody, this is Sakina Zariwala from Sri Vaishnav Institute of Forensic Science. Today, in this video, I am going to tell you about chemical methods of development of latent fingerprints. So, before going to our main topic, I will uh, tell you what kind of prints are there. So, there are three kind of prints. One is patent print, second one is latent print and the third one is plastic prints. Uh, if we talk about patent prints, patent prints are those that are seen by our naked eyes that we can see with our naked eyes and it's visible and you can uh, detect the minutiae or uh, you can compare it easily with your naked eyes. Okay. Uh, for the second one, second one is plastic print. So uh, for a plastic print, you'll need a casting to do, like uh, that we do in uh, footprints, or if we talk about rugoscopy. So we do some kind of casting for it, and then we can develop it, and we can see it, and, uh, and uh, do the comparison. Okay, and for the third is latent print. So we'll, I'll describe you more about and tell you more about latent fingerprints. So latent fingerprints are hidden or unseen fingerprints. Latent prints are undetectable and you need some kind of physical or chemical processes to detect it and to develop it and so that you can see it with your naked eyes. Some special kind of residues or special kind of chemicals or powders are designed for this so that you can develop and see see easily from our naked eyes what kind of prints are there. Okay. Latent prints are also affected by the age of the person, gender of the person, stimuli like what uh, that will depend on his reflexes, his occupation, his disease, uh, is, he, is he having any kind of diseases any substances and uh, any substances that he may have touched before prior to the deposition like you you have got the print before that he has uh, touched anything that have given you that kind of latent fingerprint so that will depend on uh, that will be the dependable situation and it will depend likewise right and for the deposition of surface area it will also depend on surface area of the print like uh, if there is a glass surface and if there is a wooden surface so the print will be very different on both of them like it will be easier to detect the latent fingerprint on the glass surface rather than wooden because it's a textural surface no? so it will be difficult to take out and uh, do the development process on that wooden surface rather than glass surface okay now we'll discuss more methods of development of latent fingerprints so there are two methods chemical and physical method so if we talk about physical methods there are uh, in the market there are kind of uh, powders are there from which you can take out the print so they, uh, they are given some kind of color so that if the texture like if you have a black black texture so you have a white powder for development of it like you can use titanium oxide plus zinc oxide plus gum acacia likewise okay so that's why these kind of powders are developed uh, for laser methods uh, laser methods are a different kind of physical method electromagnetic powders are also there so that they can stick to a fingerprint and that can be developed and image and for certain image announcement techniques are used for the development so we'll take it we'll discuss this physical methods in a very brief and now we'll come to the chemical methods that is our main topic so for the chemical methods, uh, we use reagents, fuming methods, bloody methods and greasy methods. So let us discuss that. Uh, first method, I will be discussing four methods with you, four chemical methods with you and I will tell you how to develop it. Okay. So first method is silver nitrate method. This method is based on the fact that sodium chloride of the deposited perspiration in the latent impression reacts with silver nitrate solution to form silver chloride with light sensitive. Uh, as we know, silver is a shiny substance, so it will be a little fluorescent. Like if you 
product developed fingerprint in dark so it will shine it will give you shiny surface okay and how this process takes place like this though silver chloride substances right we have sodium chloride in our hands of course you all would be knowing that we have salty sweat right so that sodium chloride will react with silver nitrate and it will form silver chloride which is light sensitive so we are talking about where silver nitrate is not the light sensitive material silver chloride the reaction it do with our salt that is nacl that makes it a shiny surface and that develops the latent fingerprint so when this developed fingerprint is exposed to light it breaks into its component silver and chloride okay and the color will get by this uh, fingerprint when we will develop it it will be reddish brown and for this will we use 5% for the reaction we use 5% silver nitrate solution usually it is used and it may differ from situation to situation okay for the next one uh, this is the reaction that's taking place okay uh, now we'll come to nin hydrin method so it consists of development of uh, latent prints with ninhydrin and is based on the chemical reaction of ninhydrin with amino acid which are present in our perspiration uh, i know i think you all would be aware of what is perspiration perspiration is our sweat perspiration is just sweat for now let's discuss uh, let, let take it as sweat okay and of course I, our sweat is lot of components like it is a of course a biological fluid so it will come includes nacl and it is it also contains amino acids so ninhydrin reacts with these amino acids which are brought out from our sweat and it gives us purple reddish stains what we do like we have a uh, we have a latent print on uh, on any surface so we'll spray this ninhydrin substance of course that print would incl uh, include amino acids so we'll spray this ninhydrin on that and we'll get the latent print and we'll be easily uh, able to detect the print okay for this method we use 1.5% solution of ninhydrin now we'll come to the next uh, next slide uh, this is the reaction that's that takes place on the uh, when we spray that latent uh, that ninhydrin on the latent fingerprint so we we can see when ninhydrin is added with amino acid it forms rumen purple and it gives out carbon dioxide uh, h2o and also when and uh, one form of aldehyde when when if you do the practical so when you will spray this you will get a smell so this smell is of the co2 and rch2 okay now we'll come to the next slide this is osmic acid method this method is based on reaction of os osmic acid vapors with oily matter matter of latent impression when osmic acid vapors come in contact with sebaceous matter it is reduced to metallic osmium which is blue color so again this is connected to our sweat so when osmic acid comes in contact of our sebaceous matter that is our sweat okay so it will form metallic osmium that metallic osmium will give you blue color okay so we use for this preparation we use dissolving 3 grams of osmic acid and 100 cc of carbon tetrachloride ether or ethyl chloride uh, ethyl alcohol sorry okay so we use these methods for that and now we'll come to the next method 
this is sino acrylic method so this this method is a uh, differs a little bit than the all the three methods that we have discussed before so sino acrylic method includes fuming so sino acrylic fuming is a chemical method for detection of latent fingerprints on non porous surfaces such as plastic glass rubber bands finished and unfinished goods okay so th these kinds of textures are used usually for all the latent fingerprints we use these surfaces only we can detect uh, fingerprints from these surfaces okay the method relies on the deposition of polymerized cyanoacrylic ester on latent fingerprint residue latent fingerprints can be developed on non porous surfaces by following sequence steps okay uh, they are telling us the step now i'll tell you the steps that are included okay place the articles bearing latent fingerprints into the cabinet their surfaces should be exposed to cyanoacrylic fluids like you'll put cyanoacrylic into a chamber kind of thing it may be of glass okay it, uh, it, de it depends so you'll put it into it and you will put that few drops of cyano acrylic into small porcelain dish and place the dish into fuming cabinet now will allow the items to be exposed to the fume until whitish colored fingerprint patterns appear so this is all about my today's topic i'll i told you about the four methods of uh, development of chemical methods and thank you for listening